Have you ever thought about buying land and building a house for you and your family? We've never thought about it until just recently and we just made a purchase of new land for our family that's actually a legacy play. My name's Joe Moffitt. I'm Christina Moffitt. AKA Team Moffitt with Master Life by Design and today's video is buying land and building a house for our family, Team Moffitt. So this channel is all about creating financial freedom and our main focus is through real estate but there's other ways of creating passive income and we also help with the mindset around it and we just purchased 2.2 acres for our family and I want to share with you the mindset behind it and then we'll reveal numbers and the story along the way we even got a video we're gonna share with you with our kids out there in the sunset view it's just absolutely stunning but we want to share our journey with you so let's jump in so we've been looking at investing in properties to create co-living it's a great strategy that we're implementing in our portfolio and we've been doing we've been underwriting all these deals lately and our friends purchased land about 35 40 minutes away from here and last week we went to go look at this land just to check it out get out in the country see what it's like and um, on the way up there we're driving down a dirt road and she's like do you remember what you said well, I've been trying to look for a co-living in Idaho and the numbers just aren't working. So I was like, well, maybe we could build something in Idaho and make the numbers work. So we were driving up and I was like, I'm not sure that professionals are gonna be wanting to drive out here for co-living. No, <clears throat> absolutely not. And, and I was like, babe, I shared with you that we weren't going to uh, do this for co-living. It was more for us. And, and so- And I said, no, you said we were going up here for co-living. So I'm sure you guys have yeah. those thoughts. Too. Yeah, so <laughs> lesson number one is make sure you're, you and your spouse, you communicate effectively and actually have them clarify and verify. But anyway, it all worked out. So we get there and I will tell you the views of these plots were absolutely stunning, right? And I'll say there's about 15 plots of land that was open up. We met the owner of the property. His, uh, his, it's been in his family since the 1800s, which was really crazy. And so his kids and his grandkids, no one of them want anything to do with it. And so they started selling it off. And uh, they were doing two acres all the way up to six acres. One of our friends from church bought almost four acres and he turned us on to it. And then we found out another friend of ours from church. They just bought a lot up there too. And we brought some of our friends up there to check out to see if they want to buy and so anyway we get up there and we were looking between two lots but the first lot was about I think two a little over two and a half acres the second lot which was up higher was about 2.2 acres and we were there for what probably like three hours looking at, at it <clears throat> absolutely stunning and then uh, we brought our kids back later that evening we thought we'd be there for an hour but and we're pretty quick but like when we looked at the model home in our current house guess what we went through it in like five minutes so we walked four thousand square feet like that right and so but we took three hours and we brought our kids back later that night and they were just having a blast and so over the weekend we went back a second time with all of our friends and ultimately we made the decision on the lot that we currently have now and so real quick we want to show you a video of our kids on our lot that we uh we're under escrow with we're not closed yet but we will be in about two weeks so we'll play that video for you let you see what it looks like and we'll come back from there elves come here let's call them penguin and frisbee okay what's that another stairs staircases guys um, You okay, bud? All right, so there it is. That's our plot. We're super excited about it. I and what's even crazy is it's. I might be able to share a schematic of it. And what's crazy, it kind of goes on this point. And what I found was I could actually push filled dirt all the way till the natural drainage valley of the land, so that we could get like an extra 0 0.15, 0 0.2 acres out of it. And so a we're gonna a buildable land, but it's not built. Like what what she's saying is we're not gonna build on that right like we're not building where the fill dirt is you got to compact it now i'll tell you a week ago we were out there and i had no idea very little about development and so i learned so much when we were trying to figure out which lot should we pick this lot or that lot and i'll get into, i'll talk about that here in a moment but why don't you share with everyone 
Um, how, you know, how do you know if it's a yes or no when you have like two things? Yeah. So one of the things I was telling Joe, um, and like side note, when we moved to Idaho and we bought the house that we're currently living in, all signs, feelings, thoughts, emotions, everything was a green light. Like there wasn't a bone in our body. There wasn't a red flag that was presented that would have made us like go off course of the decision to buy the house. And have you ever had a moment where you're just getting all these red flags or you feel uncertain about it or you start to feel stress or worry or different emotions come up that aren't serving you? That's an indication that you might not be going down the right path. So we were standing on this plot of land and I was telling Joe, I haven't felt like this about a property in a really long time. So it was like everything in my being was saying yes. And through this whole process, there was not, not, I don't want to say that. Through this whole process, there wasn't anything that came up that would have had us question getting this property or nothing got thrown in our way. So it was like all green lights. So for me, that was like a yes. And she's not a country girl. There's not a <laughs> Trader Joe's or a Target, which we don't do Target anymore, but that was her qualification on where to live. Uh, it was a no-go. So, um, but this isn't a, we're not moving. This is a second home. This is yeah. the whole mindset behind us is, well, number one, if the world goes crazy, we're high up on a, the plot of land that we're on. We're high up so we can see everything. We have a beautiful view, as you guys saw, of uh, the river and the mountains and everything. And so, and we can be self-sustaining. We'll have solar, we're gonna have a well or a well on the property. We can even collect, build the devices out. I don't know what they're called, but you can capture the rainwater and it can be filtered for drinkable water. And so we'll be self-sustaining chickens. We won't have cows or anything, but we will have greenhouse and grow food. And so it'll be really cool. It's only 35, 40 minutes away from where we currently live. So we wanted to be able to give our kids that experience of nature, right? Like when we got out there, we just felt the presence of God out there. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. And thinking about how our kids can, you know, not have to be part of the everyday hustle and bustle of life and, you know, the hustle of business and just sit back and really just be with nature, ride quads, get dirty, just, you know, just throw rocks, like just all the cool things that I never got to do, but got to play in nature a lot since there was no iPads or anything back then. So anyway, we we made the decision because it was all green lights and another thing we did was we prayed on it right and we felt and here's how we knew after we prayed on it like we had total peace in purchasing the lot we had and so anyway with that let's jump into some of the numbers here so that you guys can take an understanding of like what it all looks like so you might be thinking to yourself how can I afford to buy land, right? Sometimes it's like we have, you see these videos of what people are doing and then that limiting belief crossed your mind, like this isn't possible for me. So Joe is gonna share the numbers and this strategy that we're using to build on the land is actually more affordable than you might think. Yeah, so, all right, so the lot that we bought was came out to $189,000, okay? So not a lot, but uh, it's about $75,000 or $75, an acre, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't pretty, that's not bad. Uh, out Especially here though, right yeah, it's, it's growing. There's a lot growing. And so for 2.2 acres at 189, we were excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you, when you go to buy land, what most people think is, it's not like buying a home where you put 3% down. You're usually gonna have to put anywhere from 20 to 30% down on that lot. Um, because really the bank doesn't have any, you know, they can't do anything with it. There's no asset, it's just dirt. And if no one was buying, wants to buy dirt, then they can't fully recoup their money right away and it might take a while. Um, so, but what was great was the agent that we were working with. Now here's tip number one, always ask your agents, especially if they deal with investors, if they have a private money lender. So our agent actually had a private money lender that we could utilize. So all we had to do was put 20% down. And to be honest, it was only a 9% interest only payment, 9%. Now, I didn't know if that was really good or bad, so I went to my mastermind network called GoBundance. If you guys are ever interested, let me know, reach out, I'll get you a referral code there. But they're like, everyone I asked, it was like, can anyone do better than 9%? And everyone was like, if there's no points, like 
and even if there was points like can i can i get a hold of this person and have them be my private money lender um but our agent won't let us uh, know who it is exactly so we'll take care of it and we'll just move on but so we got a great deal we feel we feel like god led us in the right way so literally we only had to put down um we only had to put down 20 percent so we had to put down two thousand dollars of earnest money so that left 170 187 thousand and you put 20 percent down that's thirty seven thousand four hundred dollars now could we take money out of our account that 34 or excuse me 37 thousand pulled out of the account yeah sure but cash is king so i didn't want to do that so here's what we did instead. Now, not everyone's gonna agree with this, but this is what works for us. And that is we took, we had 401ks that we had from when we both worked at Tony Robbins. And so the greatest thing that we were, what we were gonna do, because I was learning this process, was we were gonna just roll that in as our 20% down payment. The problem is when you have a 401k, if you move it to a self-directed IRA custodian, so that you can direct where you invested, you cannot have your name, it can't be for personal use. Let's put it that way, simple. You can't use it for personal use. So we're like, crap, I can't use the 401k. We're gonna have to use the money from our bank account. I don't wanna do that because the market's going a different direction possibly and we would wanna take advantage of it. We'd rather have the money to take advantage of it. So what we did instead was we called them and there was, they we withdrew the money. Right? We withdrew the money and what happens there is they're gonna hold the federal and the state if there is any taxes. And then that's gonna be deposited into our account. Whatever's remaining, we're going to put that towards the down payment. And we're gonna just take, I don't know, it's probably gonna be 13K, maybe somewhere around there or 10K that we're just gonna have to come out of pocket with closing costs, right? Cause there's, we're splitting uh, closing costs. So that's how we did it. Now, if you have 37K just laying around, cool, you can do that. We just did, we had 401Ks and we looked at them, we're losing, you know, 3% every quarter, actually 3.45% every quarter over the last few years. Last year, we lost 17% in 2022. I was like, we're losing money here. Let's put this to work. And so um, that was the thought process, the mindset behind it, where we could take 37K of cash and go put it into another co-living co property and make money on that. And it helps us qualify faster. So that was the mindset around that. Did you want to add anything? Okay, so that's how we're closing the deal. So we're just we're probably gonna pull about 10K from our, uh, our accounts to be able to close and fund a 20%. And then we have a five-year balloon. Now, if you don't know what a five-year balloon means is you have a payment every month for five years. At the end of five years, you have to pay the remaining balance off. Now, what most people do, if it's like a house with a balloon, you usually refinance. Well, you can't refinance, you usually if you're going to do something like this, you're usually going to build. And then if you have a construction loan, I'll talk about that in a moment. But if you're going to go build on it, you're going to eventually refinance and pay off the land with the house. And all of a sudden it'll be one 30 year conventional mortgage. Okay. So I just want to pause real quick. If you're watching this video and maybe you're like a partner or spouse like we are, and you're just like, ah, all this number stuff just feels over my head. This is his area of expertise and I'm doing, doing my best to learn and I'm learning every day. But one of the things that really inspires me is focusing on why we're doing this. And it makes learning about the numbers and this whole process like so much more inspiring and empowering. So as I'm listening to him, as I'm listening to him, as I'm listening to him talk about all these numbers, sometimes it even just feels over my head. So just, you know. You might have to rewatch it, re it once or twice. So that's how we're qualifying for the land. Now, our payment, it's gonna start 30 days after we close and it's gonna be roughly a little over 1100 bucks per month, which for us, it was, you know, we were comfortable with that type of payment. Uh, for the land. Now, when we go into a construction loan, which we're talking about, you have to, there's many different lenders you can utilize. They have different processes. So check out different lenders, get advice. The lender we're using now, they said that they would pay off the private money lender. So we would be able to own the land. We would be able to start doing the development. And once they close, we would just naturally roll into a 30 year fixed mortgage. Now, what's beautiful is you only have to qualify one time right up front. 
Some companies, some lenders, they actually have you qualify up front and right before the 30 year, uh, before once you close, before they give you your 30 year conventional loan. And that's double the work and it's just, it's a headache. So if you can find a lender like that, we're talking to someone at US Bank. I don't know if the program's gonna be around when you're talking to them, but check them out. And if you need a personal referral uh, across the United States, I got a banker that does all that, a lender that does all that. So, all right, so when it came to the decision on which plot of land, not only did we feel peace, but the other thing was strategically, we had to look at certain things uh, on the site map, right? Like there was a pit test on, you know, on each plot there's a pit test and I was like, okay, what's a pl uh, pit test? And she certainly didn't know, I didn't know. And so I started calling friends and learning about it because you gotta also have, we had to put in septic, power was underground already, so we're good there. We don't need to do anything there. Um, we have to put in septic and we have to have a well. And so as we're starting to get an idea of how much each costs, a septic can be anywhere from 10 to $15,000. And then a well we heard was anywhere from 35,000 to up to 90,000. It's all based on how deep you need to go before they strike water. And if you didn't know, there's water that's flowing underground, guys. Um, she didn't know that. And so <laughs> that's what they're looking for. And they have these really cool machines that help you do that. So on the site map, I'm looking like where's the wells because I don't want it to be in the middle where we want to build our house. That wouldn't work. And so I'm looking at both plots to determine that. And then I heard about a leach pit and our leach field. And I'm like, what is that, <laughs> right? And it's like at where the septic is and then it goes through all these, these pipes, right? And it breaks down your, your waste and it leaks it out in the ground. And they do a test where they drill down and they tell you what type of uh, clay, sand, whatever it might be, and where you can actually have these leach fields uh, pour out the waste and how deep it goes. And so we were looking at where these uh, leach fields could go because I didn't want it underneath the house clearly. And so all of a sudden it just made it more clear based on the site map, which plot spoke more to us. And the lot we picked actually was great and where it's gonna be is out in the backyard. And what's, it's gotta be, it's gonna be about eight feet deep. So um, don't worry, you don't smell it or anything like that. But what's cool is we know that area is gonna grow really well. So maybe we need to plant like a little garden there because it'll just, you know, grow up. So anyway, that's, I started learning about the horizontal development. Horizontal is like septic and water and electrical and all that good stuff, right? So that's called horizontal. Then there's a vertical. And this is where she's really excited because we're not building a house. We're gonna build something different. What are we building, babe? We're gonna build a barn dominium. Ooh, so let us show you what a barn dominium is. We'll put up a picture here so you can kind of see what it looks like, which is really cool. You're probably seeing them on Instagram a lot too because they're becoming really popular. Yeah, we, we uh, the way our house faces, uh, we're, or the way we're gonna build our house is we're gonna have the back of it facing the view that you guys saw that faces the river and the sun setting and we're gonna have like an entire wall as a glass and it's gonna be pretty cool yeah um, and we got to work on the heat and stuff like that and we'll, we'll work on it but the reason why we want to build a barn dominium is it's different than the current house we have right mm -hmm. we love the big open concept and the beauty of it and what I'd like to do <clears throat> is we have our house, our barn dominium, and then we're gonna have our goal right now, as of now, is to build a shop, right? Like where we can store all the toys, a boat or RV or whatever, you know, quads, stuff like that, park cars. And because it's just steel, it's just like a steel frame. And it's a barn dominium's no different. It's all steel frame and then the outside's just like a normal house and it just- The inside's like a normal house. Inside's like a normal house too. You do, depending on the open concept, you might have a, a steel beam, a, cr a couple steel beams going across the living room, which is not bad at all. You paint it the color that matches great interior. That's not my strength, but we'll figure it out. Um, but we're gonna build that shop and above it, we're gonna build like a, a nanny suite or a grandma, you know, mother-in-law suite, whatever they call it, or in a little apartment. And we might, when we're not there, we might Airbnb it just to generate cash flow. If we can generate, you know, a grand, two, three grand a month on that. And when we're not there and you're not getting access to our barn dominium, but they have this epic view in nature, they don't have to worry about the hustle and bustle, then hey, that pays for our mortgage, right? And so 
we're, uh, we're really excited about that aspect. So then I started talking to builders and luckily we have some friends that are in our church that build barn dominiums and I was asking like, what does it look like to you know have have you come in and get that whole project running and so we're gathering numbers but he said anywhere from if he just does the outer shell the frame and you know the, get the outer shell going and now that the inside drywall or anything like that that could be about 65 to 85 dollars a square foot which isn't bad at all if we have him do the whole thing it could be anywhere from like a hundred to 150 a square foot so i'm thinking if we're around one 110 a square foot we're not doing super lavish things in there inside like these great details granite countertops we'll probably just do quartz instead but we want to keep it around 110 dollars a square foot i ideally would like a 3,000 square foot barn dominium what do you want Maybe like four. <laughs> four. So we're talking about three hundred and thirty thousand to four hundred and forty thousand, you know, for the the place itself, right? And then we have the the barn. Now we're not going to build the the shop slash barn. We're, and when I say barn, it's not like where you put hay or anything. It's where we put our toys. All right, uh, kids' quads and park and everything. But we might actually hold off on that right away. We might just build the barn dominium, enjoy it the next year, go out and build that. We're still talking through it financially, you look through it, right? And so we're gonna have that whole experience um, as we're kind of going through the architecture process. But those are some of the numbers that we're looking at. And I asked the construction uh, lender, or the lender for the construction loan, and I said, I would like to operate that. And he said, well, you've never built any of these, so you actually have to have a GC, a general contractor for those of you that don't know that so it's a whole learning experience for us but overall we're excited to actually you know give our kids a different lifestyle if the world goes to crap we'll have tons of food and power and guns and ammo up there so we'll be fine and uh, if anyone tries to do anything we'll like I said we'll be fine but I'm excited about it what are you excited about yeah, just one more thing. So he mentioned earlier, we were talking to this guy, Bob, who was in his late 70s, and we were looking at all the mountains surrounding the house, as you saw in the video, and his family owned most of the mountain hillsides that you could see. And so when we were making this decision, one of the things Joe and I were talking about is how so many people want to go out and buy the brand new car, right? Because you get it in, it smells good, and it looks good, and it's got all the new accessories, but you're coming out of it spending at least a thousand dollars a month or more then you got your insurance on top of that and then we were like for what people are paying for a car we can be owning land so we have a lot of clients that want financial freedom but their spending habits just aren't in alignment with their goals and so it's just one thing that we really took a look at is like what do we want for our legacy and this was a move that we made and that's a mindset shift right some people they want to be you know flashy and have the newest cars and nothing's wrong with that and if you have the money to do that and buy land and invest and just go for it right look that, that's the life that you want totally fine it's just we don't need like the new lambo or anything like that we're like man for the price that we're paying for the land that's less than people's car payments and a lot of those people they live paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. and it's i see it all the time with the people that we work with and so we want to help you shift that prop mindset around that because you look you're there i think steve harvey said it like all the the land in the world with all the people in it everyone can get about six acres for themselves and i'm like man i want more than i want more than six acres right but we're, we're building up to it and I'm, this land thing is really fun as we're going through this process but you know it's like financially for a thousand dollar a month payment i mean think about it what would you need to give up or what would you need to do to create an extra thousand dollars a month for some of you it's not it's not hard at all for some of you it might be a stretch but we're not saying what we're doing has to be yours it's just that we're buying the land these are the numbers that work for us and it's giving our family that legacy play in a different lifestyle which i don't know about you guys but i know that when i'm in this lifestyle of hustle and bustle for too long i get overwhelmed i get my, my battery goes to e after a while and i need to just get out in nature 
and to be able to see that sunset and to be able to be on land and we have friends there too and they have kids and our kids yeah. grow up with their kids at church it's just going to it was just a perfect fit so epic yeah it's like god just ordained that moment for us so um so anyway that's that's what we're up to all right guys so if you have any questions make sure you comment below we'd love to answer any questions again we're learning this journey but we're sharing what we're learning along the way and you know what this is what i'll say as we wrap up it's always scary initially when you don't know something but when you have the courage and you shift from that place of fear to learning you can now walk forward one step at a time. You don't have to know the whole plan from A to Z, but you can walk one step at a time to figure out what do I need to know? What do I need to learn here? And you can't be afraid to ask those questions. You might be thinking, oh, uh, this might be a stupid question, right? And there's that old, I don't know what the old adage is, but you know, if you never ask the question, you look stupid forever. But if you have to ask the question, you look stupid for a moment, <laughs> right? And it's like, I'd rather look stupid for the moment than forever right because i will i know that over time the way things are going even if we we're all in for half a million dollars eventually that place here in the next couple of years because of the growth that's happening out here it's probably going to be worth a million bucks or more and so the views are gorgeous so anyway we're learning one step at a time remember take it one step at a time you're learning you're not gonna you're not you're gonna make mistakes we are too we're learning along the way so don't beat yourself up but that's what we got so if you have any questions comment below hopefully if you got something valuable comment let us know hit that thumbs up button make sure you subscribe and that notification button click that too so that you know when new videos like this come out and we're just really excited to show you in the next year or two the progress and the completion of it and we want to bring you along that journey uh, along with our family so it's gonna be pretty cool we're excited so all right guys Joe Moffitt Christina Moffitt aka Team Moffitt with Master Life by Design thanks for tuning in have a great one guys see ya